rest of the service. Let us glorify you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to take the offering as we sing Victory in Jesus. Let's all stand. And let's see. Today is the sixth. Yeah, so this is the first Victory in Jesus of this year. So let's really belt it out. Here we go. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Don't you know, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me. With his redeeming blood, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing flood. All right, you warmed up? Let's sing about that mansion. Here we go. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet tale sing up there, the song of victory. Don't you know, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Praise God. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due. Here, ready? He plunged me. To victory beneath the cleansing flood. Good thing. Give yourselves a hand. You may be seated. And are we ready for Dr. Merced to come up and expound from the Dr. Merced? From the scripture? Hey, God's good what? And all the time? It is so good back. It's so good to be back home, believe it or not. Even though Florida was good, I'm still gonna be pushing that all summer. All winter, all summer, saying, Hey, I'll be here for the summer. In the winter, I'm gonna go back to Florida. No, just kidding. It was terrible in Florida, by the way. It was. It was too cold. And you guys had minus zero, they had mine uh, they had twenty two degrees and they were crying. Could you believe that? I'll probably be pretty quick tonight. Yeah, you don't believe that. I know that. I'm actually just going to use my notes from here. I wrote most of the Bible verses here. And let's put this here. Leave that here. want to welcome those that are online right now. We actually had a pretty good group a couple minutes ago. Um, and a couple people started joining in uh, a couple seconds. But I'm glad to be home. Um, there's no better place for me to be on Friday nights but just here. Um, I heard a comment today saying... The reason I like, you know, and I just edited it for myself. The reason I like our you is because God never forgets anyone. And I don't want to forget you folks. Our you is our place. Our you is, you know, it's where we come to the bottom of the shelf where I don't expect anything from you guys and you guys don't expect anything from me. It's all about God. And God's good all the time. You know, a lot of times, you know, oh, I just need this. I guess I need that, that, that. But, Lord, I need you. And, Lord, it is awesome. You know, I tease you guys here a lot, and we have fun, and it's good fun. Tomorrow morning, we're going to wake up and say, why did he tell me that dumb joke? You know, and it, but we'll remember it. But a lot of people that go to bars, and if you've been to bars and that before, the next day you wake up with a headache, you say, what did I do last night? You don't remember anything. Then you'll remember the bill when you see it come back. I spent all that money, and I bought all, you know, not us here. You go back tomorrow morning, we'll have fun. You say, man, that was good Friday night. It was bad on Friday night, whatever, but you remember what we did, amen? 
I'm gonna encourage for this year starting. Last year, um, I think the only one that remember, what was the main thing I had for next last year? Doing new things. Encouraging you folks to do something new that you've never done before. Um, I have something that I wanna see if I can put it in for this year, but I'm gonna hold it to the end because I've been praying about that. You know, I like, you know, I like to put a theme like pastor does for every month for me to encourage myself. And when he says that, I'm like, I like that. Thank you, Lord. But I want something for the entire year, something that I can do for Friday night for me. But I want to pass it to each and one of you so you can take that thing. What can I do for the Lord or what can I do for myself? Amen. What are you going to do in 2023? And I know this year we don't, you know, a lot of people that came here earlier this year, they're no longer here. My wife and I were talking to a pastor couple, a pastor uh, and his wife, the couple, they were staying at our house this week because they were bringing their son to Hiles Anderson College. And um, my wife was telling Tony, you remember how you say that you always take pictures of people in your mind when they walk in through the door? And I was saying, yeah, pastor, you know, that's awesome. They come in one way and then I see them two, three months later and it's a totally different person. I say, man, that is so cool. That's awesome. And I just pray the Lord for that. Yeah, there's some guys and, and ladies in the past that just like they're here. They just don't care. I mean, Wally Ferris was perfect. Wally Ferris came the first time. If you re Who remembers Wally Ferris? Probably only a handful of us, the, the old timers here. Can't believe I'm calling myself old timers, but we are old timers. Amen? Yeah. Wally Ferris came. He sat right where you were at. And he sat down. He's like, yeah. I think Joe Tufan. No, um, what's his name? Mace brought him. Keith, Keith Mason brought him. And they were roommates and uh, <coughs> big time roommates too. He used to drink like crazy. And brought him here while he said, no, I'm not going to, didn't like that. I think he talked to Brother Tef and Brother Tef told him, give me five weeks. Come on, it, five Fridays. And if you don't like it, I'll shake your hand. You can walk right out. After the second week, he got attached. Not to the RU only, but to God's word. And it just started changing his life. And throughout the years, it was just awesome for Wally. Um, Joe Tufano is another one. You know, he came here for the first time and just got into God's word. This, this is, this should be your goal. You know, if you, if last year you got into God's word and it's something you've never done, it was a new thing that you did last year. Like Brother Lakey said, why don't you step it up a notch? And why do you say, you know what, Lord, I used to read just what they gave me in the material, but I'm going to go way beyond that. I'm going to, I'm going to have a good time with you alone. You don't know how, how wonderful it is, and I'm not a good reader in English. My Spanish, <laughs> I've lost my Spanish because now I do a lot more English, but I'm not a great reader. I can't read quick. But one thing I can tell you, my wife, she left me? Yes. No, my wife left me, right? Where's she at? She went, don't care for her. She's over there. Just kidding. No, so I'm dead. And is there any rooms in the house? I'm going back that way. Um, my wife could testify, and I'm not saying just, I'm not trying to show off on that, but I'm just trying to tell you. Uh, my wife can testify every morning where I sit um, and just read God's word and just pray. Think about a lot of you folks. I have a printout of everyone's names and pictures. It's the only way I can remember. And I, I go through and just pray for it. That's why I took pictures of you guys tonight. So I can have that in my database for myself, and then I'll print it out, and I can look at it, and I can pray directly say, Lord, you know, I was so glad that, I, Benedict, that Benedict that I heard you talk tonight. And I'm like back there, is that him talking? Um, because I really have not heard you speak in a long time. And Dave was telling me, yeah, he's speaking. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. Because that's what's God doing in your life. You know, God's doing something. Yep. And I love that. Amen? Amen. And what it tells us in Matthew uh, 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And we've heard this verse hundreds of times. Sometimes we hear we can just quote the rest of it. But we don't do it. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? And his righteousness. We only like the last part. And all these things shall be added unto you. Oh, yeah, Lord. You know, I told the guys in the class back there, as Christians, we like to hide. You know, we're like some other religions out there, not to mention names. That, well, I do my regular things every day, and I know God's pleased with that. Are you pleased with that? A lot of times you do, thing, do things in your life and you say, I like it this way, I want it this way. It doesn't work that way. That's why we give you these 10 principles. That's why we give you the little, I took mine off this morning. Um, we have the 10 principles and a little thing that you can use here. Keep them with you. 
you know, you say, well, I can't carry my Bible everywhere. At least carry the principles or start with the first one, especially a lot of you ladies and guys that you go out after three or four months and you start working out there. Do you know how dangerous that is if you came to the home and you came from different addictions, strongholds that brought you back, and then now you're going to start working? You're going to start working there. If it's God's against us, so am I. When I go out to the world, it's not the same now that when I went into the home. You have to think that way. You have to think, okay, before I came to the home, it was hell on earth. It started really good. You were drinking. You were doing this. You were whatever you were doing. But now it's a totally different world. Satan is going to come after you with a bazooka, for lack of words. He's going to shoot not to mess your life up, but to destroy you. And when you go out there, especially you guys, when you go and you pass by, you know, we're talking about, one of the track things that you in the in the challenge book that you have to pass out tracks and bars for the folks for the homes you don't have to do that one just go and pass out something at Walmart a track or something but that's something you walk you pass by a bar and the the smell just comes right into your brain and you can say I remember how that so and so smelled that beer or that wine or that alcohol first thing you need to say well hold on if God's against it so am I now. That's stepping it up. And I know constantly, week by week, I tell you folks this because I'm encouraging you. You have to hit the devil back with the hammer because he hates you. You see what's happening right now. If you see the news, how he's, a, and it's him attacking children out there, bringing pornography all the way to the third, because it is pornography, all the way to the third floor, trying to change their mind. Well, if you feel like a girl, then you need to change. How in the world could a little kid take that? And we as adults, a lot of adults are, well, yeah, they'll learn that. No. As an adult, can I tell you this? Pornography as an adult right now, your age, married or not married, will affect you for the rest of your life. And you have to look at that. If God's against it, there's only one woman, and I'm going to be frank with you, that I want to see, and it's that one right over there. I don't care for it, and it's hard. And she has to help me say that. If you don't have that privilege at the moment, stay behind the Lord. Say, I'm going to do what the Lord says. If God's against someone, bring something bad at work or someone at the home tries to show me something or someone at the home you know are, is doing that, ladies and men, report it. Because it's not going to destroy only them. It's going to come back and destroy you. We have to do that because Satan hates be all the way from the children all the way to your life right now. You folks that are dating, because i got a daughter that's dating right now, um, getting married this year, which is going to be awesome, dating, you got to protect yourself because Satan's going to go after folks like you. A lot of you folks here that you have a girlfriend at home or, or, or you're engaged or, you know, with your wives, you know, I'm so happy that your wife is always connecting. But you have to put a protection around you. That's why I said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. What is God's kingdom? A protection around you. This is God's kingdom right here. This is what God's kingdom is a force that you're going to need around your life as you continue to grow in the Lord. Now, some of you folks said, well, at least, or are you hiding between people so people could think you're seeking the Lord? You know, this is a personal relationship between you and the Lord. This is a personal relationship between Bernice and me, no one else. And if I keep that person, there's things that I'm working in my life that she knows to try to be a better husband for her. I don't care what she's for me. I want to be a better husband to help her, to teach her, to work with her. That's the way the Lord works with each one of you. It's what, what is it that you have with the Lord? I can promise you, everyone right here, including me, we know what the Lord knows really about us. But can I ask you this question? Are you really open to yourself? Because sometimes there's something in our lives, in our hearts, that we just don't want to open to our own self so we don't have to tell the Lord, what do you think about that? The Lord says, I already know. I just need, you know, I just need for you to talk to me. You know, we sing it every day. You know, I want to walk with the Lord. I want to talk to him every day. I want to do this. But are we doing that? You were talking about prayer. We don't pray. You know, if, if don't raise your hand. But if I were to literally say, raise your hands, those that pray more than 10 minutes a day, Probably some people will really say in their hearts, I don't even pray a minute a day. And I know it's hard, but you have to start someplace. Start at least one minute a day. You know, if I were to ask how many of you folks at least 
read entire chapter this week. You say, well, I'm at the home. I'm forced to do it. That's the problem. That's hiding. You're hiding between some walls because I'm forced to do it. I, you know, read what they tell you to do according to the book. But then later on, take the book over here and say, let me find something else. Lord, let's talk to you. I mean, I'm just doing what the material, but I need more of you. The problem is we say this is how much I need of the Lord, and that's all I'm getting. That's perfect. God's going to be happy. You just became a religion within yourself. As long as I do this, 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 no one's going to bother me. Dave at the house is going to be okay. Mrs. Hagley's going to be okay. So-and-so. No, forget that. What is you? Are you seeking the Lord? Are you trying to get close to the Lord? Say, Lord, I need you. And he's going to get to that. I'll get to that and say, there's so much that I want to have fun on that one. Um, and I said this in the beginning. If you're not open to yourself, God can't help you. God wants to help us, folks. God's there waiting for us to say, open. And yeah, you, Brother Merced, you just read a minute ago, God knows our thoughts, he, what the thoughts he has towards us. He knows what's in your heart. You know, my wife can know that I love her, but if I don't tell her I love her, she's still going to wonder, wait a minute, I know he loves me, I, he could see it, but I would like to hear it. You know, if, if you guys are already in the love mode, which I think you should be because you're, get, you're getting married, um, you should be able to know that each other, you say, Sergio, she wants to hear that, I love you. If you're not saying that, uh, you get married when? In June, you might not get married if you don't say I love you because she's going to want to hear that. That's the same thing with the Lord. Lord wants to hear that. Say, he doesn't need that. Yes, he does. He needs that from us because the Lord loves you. Can I say that? The Lord loves you. Let me switch that. Let's say this together. The Lord loves me. Again, the Lord loves me. God loves you. God has so much for us. All we need to do is seek. When we seek God first, everything in our life starts falling into place. That's why we give you the IU program. That's why we give you these principles that are here. And this year, what we're going to start is the third talk. We're going to start preaching or teaching on the third talk, each and one of those for the next 10 weeks. Instead of having someone else, we're going to take 20, 25 minutes and just speak on each and the one of these principles because I want these to get into your life like th th this has been my life the, it leads me to it's not kicking me out of the Bible it's helping me to get into this word this should be your first and probably your only book in many cases a lot of us are used to well I gotta go and read this I gotta go and read this well do you read a book more than what you read this another book you know I used to, uh, you know, I, my wife could tell you, even I think for her birthday, I write three or four um, cards for her birthday. For Actually, we did that for Valentine. I write three or four Valentine cards. She, she's spoiled. She wants to hear the seedles right now, correct? Every time we have something, I, the Lord wants to know, hey, do you love me? I wrote you a love book here to tell you how I think about you, the things that I can help you with. And the Lord says, you don't even read this. And the Lord says, I took time to write this for you. This book is for you. This book is for us. You got to think, of those, these are just, <laughs> they're basic things that, that can we just throw out of the water sometimes. The Lord says he loves us. The Lord gives me a book, and he said this is a love book for me. Okay, good. This is what I do with the love notes. I'll read, read them. Take that, take the love notes together and say, oh, this is good, and throw it to the side and don't read it, and show her that you just did that. Well, hello! You do, do you say you love me? You're not reading my notes? You know, it, I said, Dave, what did you do with all the other ladies? And I know where they're at, actually. You know, the Lord wants to see that like someone that loves each other. Guys, you want, you know, if, if you're married or, or you want to be married and you have someone that you love, give the lady a card and let her take it in front of you go like this. I'll read it some other time. But you just threw it away. That's what we do with God's words a lot of times. We tell you, read that book. Seek the Lord. We're helping you. That's all I'm trying to do. All I can try to do is just help you. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Because the devil is like a roaring lion. He's going to come and try to destroy you. That's why I'm trying to stay away from. I'm not perfect at it, but I try to stay away from a lot of stuff. Amen? The Lord tells us in, in Proverbs 8, 17, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. You know, 
by reading this, you know, is, and I know in the morning, I, I think, I'm not sure, but I think in the morning, I think they have you guys just read your Bible at Bible time together. Is that, do you guys still do that? Is, yeah, that you're starting. Well, why don't you wake up earlier than that and try to change your custom? If you were in the military at three in the, at three in the morning, I think they're waking you up. You say, I just fall asleep. Doesn't matter. Let's go. Get up. Do that. You know, say, Lord, give me the power. Give me the strength to do that. Wake up a little bit early and read ahead of time. It's a, they're giving you 15 minutes. Add another 15 minutes before that and start seeking the Lord. I promise you, just try it for one week. Just one week. Try it. Lord, I'm going to seek you for this week. I'm going to follow what Dave and all of those guys are telling me. I'm going to try it. At the end of the week, like, man, the Lord has been so good to me. They gave me a bonus at work. I found something else. God has blessed me in here. You're going to realize when God says, hey, you want God to walk with you every day? That's how you walk with the Lord. Those principles will start popping up in your head. God's going to, you know, sometimes, honestly, we walk through, you know, we, we talk to someone and they say something nasty and it just flashes right. Oh, that's so funny. You didn't realize how bad that was because your mind is so custom. But when you start seeking the Lord, they say something funny. You go, whoa, hold on a second. I don't, uh, I don't like that. We need to walk away from a lot of that stuff. It's just destroying us. It's almost Satan is taking, he's trying to numb us, for lack of words, by taking the world's philosophy, like he's dumping it to the little kids, and now we're focused to the little kids, but we're already damaged. We got to get this mentality. Are you saved and you're going to heaven? Yes, amen, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. That's all you need? No. Seek God's word. Let me throw up to another one because time is flying and you're having fun. There's so much I can say. Many, uh, here's something. Many, uh, many people are seeking the Lord physically for others to see, but mentally they're totally dead. You don't know how many times in the past I fell into that. Saying I'm seeking the Lord and I was able to hide between things. Everyone's, oh, look at that good Christian guy walking over there. You get there, follow him. You know what? I was dead inside. Was it helping me? I was having problems. I was going through issues. And I had to come back to the Lord. There was only one way to come back. I didn't get, need to get saved because I was already saved. I was, going through, I was going straight to heaven, and I knew that for sure. But my problem was all the old stuff starts popping into your head, and you don't read my prayer life, my reading was the worst. And so it got to the point where I said, you know what? I'm tired of this. I got a wife. I got two girls that are growing up. They're depending on me to be the spiritual according to your word, Lord. They're expecting me to be the man of the house first and then second off spiritual leader because you've told me that. I need to change this life because if not, I'm destroying minds and I'm destroying three other people. Right now, work on yourself. Amen. Let all those that seek me rejoice and be glad. I'll leave you with that verse there. Second word. I said first one what, was what? Seek. Seek him. You seek him. Don't let the people from the home, don't let me be the one to help you seek the Lord, Bernie. You have to seek the Lord. I can't count on you to tell, you know, it, uh, uh, confession here. You know, it, it is hard. It, <laughs> Throughout the years, it's hard as a marriage to try to sit down and, and pray together. And a lot of times she's had to go, honey, we need to pray together. Oh, yeah. And it's hard. I'll be frank with you. I could be in my sunroom downstairs, which there's no sun because it's normally very dark. Um, there, I can pray for you folks for hours. And then my wife and I sit down together. It's like 10 minutes later. I'm like, okay, uh, what else do I need to say? It's hard. But when I started building that with her, things started changing. Our marriage started getting stronger. Our connection to the Lord started to grow. Are we perfect at that? No. But we're trying to seek the Lord. Here's another one. Trust him. You know, this reminded me of zip lining, Bernie. You know, she never wanted to go zip lining. I love it. You know, Puerto Rico, they have one that I think goes an entire mile. Um, I didn't want to tell her how high it is, but it's very high from hill to hill. And there's a big, you know, I saw it on video. I think Ricky Torres had it recorded. And it's a long one. I'm dying to do that. 
she doesn't even want to do one from here to there. Um, but she did it. We went, we went to uh, Mexico. We stood over there, and she actually tried it. She took the risk. She, I said, Bernice, trust me, it's going to be good. Another thing that she did was parasailing. She saw that thing all the way up there. She said, there's no way in the world. For three days, I was begging her, let's do it. She said, no, you do it alone. I'm like, I'm not doing it. I Trust me, I'll be next to you. I'm thinking, I had, why did I say that? We're both up there. If the rope breaks, I can't help her. I want to help myself. But it worked out. You know, she, she actually took the risk and did that. That's what the Lord wants from each and one of you. Just say, Lord, I'm going to do it, Lord. To you, Lord, you can help me. The Lord says, trust me. But, Lord, I don't know what, just trust me. Stick your mind out of everything else and say, Lord, I'm just going to love you. I'm going to trust you. If you're telling me there that every sin has its origin in the heart, Lord, you know what's in here. I need to, I need to trust you that you can help that, remove that from me, Lord. You can jump to another one. Our sinful habits do hurt those who are following us. Whoever, guys and ladies at the home, you folks that have finished the program and you're still at the home, there's people, new guys that just arrived. They're going to watch, you know, whatever you do is going to hurt those people. Trust the Lord that as long as you stay in this book, as long as you can get into the second phase of the RU, you're, by that time, you, your prayer and your reading should be much higher. Trust the Lord that he's going to take care of you. Another one I'll just throw in here, uh, those who do not love the Lord will not help us serve the Lord. The Lord's going to give you a vision of who you can follow and who you can't. And there's going to be people in the homes also that you can't follow. But why? Just be quiet, pull back, and say, okay, Lord, between you and me, that person's not going to help me for the moment. They need help. Let me just pray for them. You know, God has everything. Trust the Lord when he tells you. When they and some of the guys and ladies tell you in the back, do this, 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 it's because we've lived through it. We're trying to say, stop, don't go that way. You're going to get hurt. You say, nah, I'm going to try it. A couple years later, you're the one say, stop, don't go. You're telling another group, don't go, that hurts. They're like, yeah. You, you passed the first, first, you know, the first guard and you went right over them and now you're going through it. You know, trust the Lord when he says, seek me. Once you seek me, your ending is going to be ten times better. Don't try to find your own path. You know, I always tell you that. I use it like this, you know. Just stay straight online. Stay straight online with the Lord. Don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. You might see something that looks nice, but you know what? It's like a spam <laughs> that you might get in an email, or it might be a hacker that's trying to pull you around, bring it down to technology so we can understand. Um, just stay straight. Oh, it looks pretty. Go that way. Don't go. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just keep on going straight because the ending, it's better by waiting. Instead of focusing in the past, focusing, ah, uh, that's what happened to Israel. If they would have just continued their straight path, they would have got to the promised land like that. But they decided to look to the left or to the right, 40 more years in the desert, that generation was lost. Think about that. A whole generation was lost because they just did one turn to the right when the ending would have been much different. That's your life. Seek him. Trust him. Trust this word. This word has been in our hands for generations. And this world is going to destroy this book. The world is, it, it's going to, I'll probably give it 20, 30 years. I, it's not a prediction, but pro probably I can say you're not going to be able to find a Bible. That's how bad things are. Technology, this thing, I'm an IT manager and I work with all this stuff. I literally hate this stuff. Because you know what? Thing at 2 in the morning. Who's texting me? Thing. Oh, I need this, this, this. No, pick up the phone and call the person. We can. You know, I heard in the news the other day, there's a lady that teaches people how to talk because they don't know how to text. She charges $480 an hour to teach them how to talk on the phone. I'm like, <laughs> it sounds stupid, but that was happening. I think you saw that. I showed you that. I'm like, this is unbelievable. I said, man, I'll charge them $50 an hour. I'll take care of that. You know, good night. It, it, we're losing it. We're losing the reading of this book. I remember pastor said this a couple years ago. I, you know, I always used to bring my iPad to church, and it's not bad. Don't get, I use this in the morning because it's dark where I'm sitting at, um, and I, I'm very comfortable drinking my coffee and a nice blanket there and a nice cozy there and I have my Bible here, so I enjoy that. But it's just between me and the Lord. It's none of your business, amen? Um, 
And I used to bring this to church and read the Bible. The pastor said, hey, you should start bringing this book. Then he said, look for the book of Acts. And I'm like, going back to the beginning, what is the book of Acts? Oh, here it is. Because in here, I just go boom, 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 and I'm an Acts. Here, I forgot, oh, where's Proverbs? Well, I know it's in the middle of the Bible. Where's it at? That was happening to me. And that's a killer. I'm like, he wrote this book for me, and I'm trying to get, that's where we're getting to, folks. And I'm like, Lord, I'm just going to trust you. You tell me to read this book every day. You're telling me to seek you every morning. Blessed is the man that make it the Lord, that make it the Lord his trust. Put your trust in him. That was uh, Psalms 44. Uh, Psalms 41, 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Do you trust him? Or who do you really trust? Trust your old friends still? I just sit back and say, Lord, I need to trust you no matter what. I need you. Am I perfect at it? No, folks. I'm, I'm not Mr. Number One that has it all. I have a lot that I work with a lot. But one thing I'm doing is, I'm, Lord, I'm staying focused. I want your purpose. Why do you have it? You don't know how good it is to see a lot of you folks that's here coming back. And those people that come back later on, it's so, I was so, when you, when I saw you come back, I'm like, Lord, he's back. And that's awesome. I don't know where you came from, what happened, but he's back. He knows where to come. If you fall, come back here. We're not going to take a gun and, ah, look at it. You messed up. because No, 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 no. Because you know what? If I fall and I come back and I'm sitting there and I'm not preaching up here, I'm hoping you give me a hand. And I know that's hard. But that's life. Because there's none righteous, no, not one. We're all in the same boat. When I look at that righteous, imagine this line up there. That's perfection. God says there's none righteous, no, not one. The economy might be a little from, from the top. Some of us might be here in different areas. But the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one, right? That means we're on the same level. When God looks, he just sees us all in the same line. Doesn't matter if you're better than me or not. In our eyes, we may think that Lord says no. You're all in the same boat. Come to a place like Friday night. Come to a First Baptist Church where people are still going to love you. Amen? And I'll jump. Here's a quote. Um, I found this quote that just blew me out of the water. To trust God in the light is nothing. It's easy. When everything is easy. But trust him in the dark, that's faith. And faith is part of that trust. When times are really easy, now you're at the home, you're starting to get, things look easy, it's, it's nice. But once you walk out those doors, once you leave the home, it's going to get dark. Let's see how faith is going to work in this. Yes, to trust God in the light is nothing. But to trust him in the dark is faith. Charles Spurgeon said that. Walking in First Baptist Church, walking sometimes from the home. It's easy sometimes to trust there. Once you walk through those doors, who are you going to trust? You're going to trust your ways of doing things? Well, our ways did not work. That's why we're here. And it doesn't mean because Tony says up here he has it right. <laughs> I have a lot to grow up still, folks. Do you have a lot to grow up? Following your minds and your hearts? You know, sometimes it just has to be trust and obey, for there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus, but just to simply trust and obey. When you hear those songs or words in the song, all you have to think about when your parents used to tell you when you were small, trust me, don't take your fingers and put them into the water. Because something really cute is going to happen to you, and you're going to shake. And that shake is not going to, you like that shake, huh? That was just for you over there, Paul. Um, you know, trust them. Trust in the Lord. For there's no other way. You have to say, Lord, you're the man. That's all I do. Lord, I need this, 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 and this. I just want to trust the Lord. Um, the Bible tells us, the Bible does not tell us, you need to figure it out. But over and over, you will find that God says, trust and obey. 
That's why you should memorize trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in But what? It may not seem right to you in your eyes. It might seem cloudy in your eyes. It might be something you say, that's impossible. But the Lord is telling you, stay on that path. Lord, I can't see what holds the future. But I know you're holding the future. So what I'm going to do is just trust and I'm going to obey. Are you holding me? The Lord says he has us in his hands and no one can pluck us away from him. Because he wants to be able to carry you through as long as you trust him. Are you seeking the Lord? Let's let's pump that up this year. Not only through the RU material, now, you know, just take it an extra notch. Start seeking him a lot more. You say, you know, each and one of us know how much we're seeking the Lord, how much we're looking for him every day. Increase that a next step. Another thing, do, Lord, I'm going to learn how to trust you more. There's a lot of areas that, Lord, I failed in trusting you. Because a lot of times that, Lord, trust me. So, oh, I've done that, Lord. You sit in the corner. I'll take care of that because I know what to do. By the end of the day, like, I messed up. And Lord said, yeah, I'm sitting here waiting for you to tell me, help you out. And you took over, so you messed up. No, do that. And another thing, just obey. By obeying, things are going to start going. The Lord says, stay in that path. Okay, I finished the RU program. My six months are done. They're telling me, and the Lord's telling me, you need to stay a little bit more. Stay a little bit more. In a lot of cases, you know, you're done. The Lord says, you need to go back home. Go back home. A lot of you folks, I think I want to stay a little bit more. No, you probably need to go back home. And when you go back home, find a place. Well, no, I'll go back, and I'm just going to take it and relax. No, the Lord says, get back on track, even though you're over there, wherever you're going to. Stay on track. Stay on this book. That's why we tell you, take the book. You're buying them. We're not going to give them to you for free because you're going to take a lot of the material and just throw them to the side. Write your names on them. When you go back home and you go through something, remember, oh, it was in challenge book number two, challenge book number three, and go through them. Seek them. If you don't remember things, just use them as a study. Oh, I remember when I was studying that. And God's going to give you more insight as you go through material. Keep that stuff. You're going to need it one day. I promise you, keep this book because you're going to need it one day. Keep the people that are helping you because you're going to need to pick up the phone one day and call for help. Keep this pastor intact in your mind and in church because you're going to need this church one day. Seek him, trust him, and obey him. All of that leads to one thing. It's to please God. And I think that's what I want to bring. This year, I will please God. Last year was, I will do a new thing. This year, I will please God. How am I going to please God? I'm just going to seek you every day. I don't know how. I'm new at this, Lord. A lot of you folks here are new at that. Lord, I don't know how, but I'm going to ask for help to someone here because he faces help. Lord, I need that, Lord. I'm going to trust that I don't know much about this book. But I see a lot of people that have learned from it and are growing. I need to trust this book. I need to trust you. I need to learn how to start trusting people around me. And I'm just going to obey. Because why? I just want to please you. Because by me pleasing you, the mess that I've made, because it's literally, just do this. And I'm almost done here. Just in your mind, turn it back, look at your life. Tell me where God helped you mess up. Look at it and say, okay, Lord, you messed up over there with me. Lord, you messed up. This happened to me because of you, Lord. You messed up. I guarantee you it's you. It's each and one of us. We can look back and say, oh, I messed up. I shouldn't have done that this way. I should have caught that. Oh, that was my mother in law. No, it wasn't. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll just check to see if you're wrong. Um, you know, we do that. No, it's not like I just turn around. The Lord says, he'll take care of it. Just please him. He'll take care of all of that. Enemies that we've built throughout the years. You know, those friends that used to be so-called good friends, and now we can't talk to them. Family members that hated us. Things that start turning around. Spouses, we've seen it here. Spouses that will not talk to each other. The guys, in a lot of cases, girls will get into God's word, follow God. They start seeking them, trust them, and obey. Six months later, 
actually had the first phone call. You know what I'm talking about. A couple people. Oh, I'm looking for Khalid. How are you doing? I heard that things are going. They never even had that conversation in years. Every time they talked, if they were in front of each other, they would have had knives on each other. But God has done that. God started fixing the past because the future was starting to come up. And God says, I have a good ending because, you know what? I have some good thoughts about you. And I have a good ending for you. Again, I'm going to repeat that. I'm gonna, I'll probably put that in next week's paper. Seek him. You seek him. Trust him. You trust him. Don't let no one around you trust him. You trust the Lord first. And obey him. Why? Because this year, all I want to do is please you. Don't do it for your family members to see, oh, look at how good he's doing. No, no, no. I don't care about anyone else, Lord. I just want to please you. God will take care of all of that for you. God's going to take your wife, and she's connected all the time. I get so happy. She's the first one on. And like today, the microphone wasn't working. She said, hey, the microphone, I can't hear. I'm like, oh, she's my lead. Boom. I turned it on. She was able to hear the testimony. And she heard your testimony, by the way. Um, but, you know, that's what the Lord, he'll start fixing your world, church. Amen? God's good what? As long as you seek, trust, and obey the pleaser. Please the Lord this year. Bow your heads. Lord, I love what it says in Psalms 4, 74, Lord. Let those that seek be rejoice and be glad. I hope this year, Lord, not only we just come here just to go through material, just to accomplish certain things, but that we can all together, Lord, as a group. This is a family. Like Tim said, this is our own little location here for all of us, Lord, that we can learn how to seek you, Lord. Take it to a new level. Not only just to read, not only to do this, that, but, Lord, it's to seek you, to trust you, to obey you, Lord. Why? Because you love us, Lord. You have so much for our lives, Lord. That sometimes I look back and say, Lord, I need this, this, and this. And Lord says, yeah, you're doing really good, Tony. Here, do this. And I love it when you do that, Lord. But Lord, I ask you me, for the men of the home, Lord, like I pray every day, Lord, and the ladies, Lord, that you may, one way or another, Lord, encourage their hearts. Holy Spirit, that you may work in their minds. If they're saved and they know for sure they're going to go to heaven, Lord, I know the Holy Spirit, it's in them. That, Lord, you can encourage them, Lord, that they can take it a notch higher this year. Not only to come through the material, go through the program, and get out of here, Lord. Because the world, Satan, is going to double try and chase them now. But, Lord, bless them, Lord. Give them wisdom, Lord. Open their hearts, their minds as they open your word, as you talk to them, Lord. That they may learn how to please you, Father. You have so many wonderful things for all of us, Lord. And, Lord, I thank you for blessing each and one of the men and ladies that are here, Lord. I've seen them grow throughout the years, Lord. And it's encouraged me, Lord. It's helped me, Lord, to continue seeking you, Lord. And I know you love each one of us, Lord. But, Lord, if there's someone here tonight that have never trusted you, Lord, and they're, they say, I could try to seek him, but I don't find him. But it's because they have not trusted you as their personal Savior, Lord. But if there's someone here tonight, you've always heard that each night here, but you have doubt. You don't know if you're going to go to heaven or to hell. And you say, Lord, I have a doubt on that. I'll have someone take the Bible. They can show you. I'm telling you, you want to seek that. You want to know for sure that when you die, you go straight to heaven. I can have someone take the Bible. They can show you that you can know without a shadow of a doubt that when you die, you can go to heaven. That's the first part of seeking the Lord. That's the first part that's going to help you from that point to be able to trust someone to open the book and show you not from what they have but what God has for you and that's going to be a good place to obey and to please the Lord if there's someone like that here or online you can write on the on the page but if there's someone here you've never trusted Christ as your Savior you have doubts on that you know don't feel shy about that don't leave a Friday night hearing that over and over over and you just leave this place and one day you die and you appear in hell and you say what happened I was going to Friday nights no, that you trust Christ as your personal Savior. That's the biggest thing. Have you put your trust 100% in Jesus Christ? Not on Tony Merced, not on Dave, not on Tim, not on your challenger leaders, not on the men and ladies of the home. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If you have not, just raise your hand. I'm the only one looking here. I'll have someone 
show you anyone like that. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for tonight, Lord. Thank you for the for the love you have for us, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord. I've been thinking about this for the past couple months, Lord, on something new that I need. This this is for me, Lord, and I'm bringing it to everyone else as something that I need to learn is to continue to seek you more. I need to step it up a notch, Lord. Doesn't mean because I'm the director I can just live it easy. No, Lord, I need to step it up a notch. I want to learn how to seek you a lot more, Lord. I want to trust you a lot more, Lord. I know I need to obey you a lot more, Lord, because all I want to do this year, Lord, is my goal, Lord, is to please you, Father. Thank you for the leaders here, Lord, the challenger leaders. Thank you for the, uh, the leaders of the homes, Lord. Thank you for a great pastor, a great church, a great location, Lord, that you have brought us all together here on a Friday night, Lord, to be able to work with each other, pray with each other, Lord, seek you together, Father. And I ask you, Lord, that you may bless each and one of the ladies, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God's good what? I think we have awards, right?